See, now Despain has to be what his body suggests, that he's a monster, that he's a sick and destroy guy. But we said it from the beginning, Joe. He's not that kind of guy. He's a guy that likes to box, a guy that likes to be a little bit more sophisticated than just to walk in. Now he has to walk in. And again, is it in his makeup to do that? Saw Salak wind up and land that right hand and blood spraying across the ring. This is reminding me of the amateurs a little bit. What I mean by that is in the amateurs, when you do them in the Olympics, when a guy gets ahead, he starts to go into that prevent. He moves around a lot. He knows that he's got the fight. He just doesn't want to give it up now. He starts to move. And Salak has experience at doing that, and you can almost see it here. He's done this before, I guarantee you, in international competition, where he knows he's ahead, where they have that scoring system, where it shows you what the score is, everybody knows, and he starts moving. He knows he's ahead, and he's acting the same way. He's done this before. And that means that the Spain really has to take chances now. And I know the temptation, Joe, when you wait behind for Despain is jab and then look for that right hand up top because you want to you wanna score something big. I think he should look downstairs because those legs are getting Salak out of trouble. They're keeping Despain off balance. You got to take those legs away. See that right hand to the head right now, I would throw it, I would bury it downstairs. This was what they chose. Two undefeateds coming to this point, and Despagne Tell him to stop right now facing the, the pressure of knowing only six minutes remain. Cut the ring off. Okay. Trying to okay. stay unbeaten. He will need the rally to his, when he, when he comes and mount to a comeback here. Okay, so keep doing what you're doing. And give me the jab. Change your rhythm. Of the and jab. Ishmael Salah with Shadid Saluki. Jab, jab right. Train Lehman Brewster to his upset of Vladimir Klitschko for the winner tonight. The lofty status of being among the best in the world. Teddy, we talked about it earlier. The performance we're seeing tonight with Salak, if he can hold on and grab this win the way he's gone about it, he's got to be very much in the mix. And again, I had him here before. I might put him up around here now. And of course, Glenn Johnson will be contending at 168 pounds. So that creates another opening in the light heavyweight division. Round number nine. Does Despagne have what it takes to figure this out? It's a mount a rally. You know you're trying to land probably the right hand. I mean, that's, that's the payoff punch right now for just vain to get back into this. But you have to know what you're trying to land it against. You have to understand your target. And it's a moving target. So I'm lowering the sights if I'm to Spain. And I'm shooting that right hand. I'm gonna discipline myself as much as I want to shoot it to the head, I'm gonna shoot it to the body. I have a better chance to land it there, slow him down, and then go upstairs. Reminder, college basketball tomorrow, Big East doubleheader, Louisville, West Virginia, then number seven, Notre Dame, and number 16, UConn. College basketball presented by Five Hour Energy. So watch when the jab of Despain stops coming. That comes. When there's no jab to control Salak's rhythm on the outside, he jumps in and out with those smooth, quick punches anytime he wants. So the jab is not only important for Despain to set up the offense, but it's his defense. It really is his defense. It keeps the lock from controlling the rhythm, from pot shot. It takes a lot of discipline for a guy like Despain to remind himself, I gotta stay with that jab. I gotta stay with that jab. As soon as you turn that jab off, that happens. This little stop and pop from Salak. Blood splattered everywhere, ringside here, as those well, cuts around both eyes opened up in the third round. 
Well, this will be one of those weekends when, again, your cleaner is going to wonder what you do for it. Yes, indeed. It's enough DNA to go around ringside. Says, well, this guy is such a quiet guy, such an unassuming guy, <laughs> such a gentleman, and you know what? He brings in bloody suits every he week. He might be a dangerous guy. <laughs> and right now, it's getting to a dangerous point for this pain. There's a lunging left hand. This is that lottery ticket into Spain's gloves. Can he cash something and hit the jackpot late here? Slava pot shot for a moment again with the absence of the jab and then a late rally here in the closing moments of round number nine as Salak goes on the attack. They will have one round to go as the blood continues to stream down to Spain's face. Look at that left eye. Okay. Listen. Tell them this round the guys coming up gunning. Hey, keep sticking to the jab. Take the turning. You don't know what you're going to do. Take a look at those jabs and then that left hook. I was talking about it early, Joe. We haven't seen a lot of it, but besides everything else, Salah throws a good left hook to the body. And again, it starts with the jab. He goes upstairs. He goes downstairs. Mixes it up. Now watch at the end of the round here. You're going to see a desperate to Spain. He tries to get into his mind. He, he wants him to fight with him. So watch at the bell. Watch. He's going to go after him and he's not buying it. Yep. That shows me everything I need to see for the future of Salat. He is honed in. He knows that he has to concentrate on hey. what's in front of him hey, and not get caught up in anything else. Tom. See, a lot of fighters would not have the capacity to kind of ignore what the Spain just did right there. But Salak has the confidence and the professionalism and the attitude, walk right to his corner and say to himself, no, you're not going to trick me into showing my manhood, doing something that would be foolish, something that would give you the landscape you want. And you can't blame to Spain for doing what he did because he's desperate. At the end of that round, he said, let me get into his face a little bit. Maybe this last round, I can get him to fight with me more than he should. Comes charging in that time. Punch out. Was there the CompuBox? Box? Punch Total punches. 237 Salak landed, 136 to Spain. Of course, this fight turned very early in Salak's favor with the one big power punch, the right hand, in the closing moments of the second round, and then peppering him with an assault in the third round that opened up two cuts. You know, Joe, obviously, at this point, it looks pretty desperate, pretty bleak for this Spain. But if this fight was 12 rounds, He'd be awful happy, wouldn't he? And Brian Kenny just informed us, Brian Kenny always looking out for us, just informed us that the promoter for De Spain is complaining that yeah. this was supposed to be a 12-hour fight. You know, I was watching ringside as Louis de Cubis was having a heated discussion with the Florida commissioner, who was Thomas Malloy. And Malloy picked up the bout sheet, brought it right over ringside, which was probably the signed agreement and the licensed bout sheet, and said it says right there, 10. And that's it. This is the 10th and final round. Trying to buy his fighter a couple extra rounds. Yeah. Trying to find a way to turn a really, truly dark cloud into a silver lining. Shows you how far Dukubis will go for his guys. Well, he's trying anything he can. And he understands 10 is not going to get it done. Final half minute. It is desperation time for De Spain. And if 10 is going to get it done, it's got to get done in the next 25 seconds, and it's going to have to get done with the right hand. Does he have it in him? Can De Spain come up with it? You know, we said from the beginning it was going to be about right hands. Both guys' right hands. 
to Spain has to show in the next 10 seconds a big right hand. Well, the list of light heavyweight contenders will have a new name added to it. A good, strong night from the Ukrainian native Ishmael Salak. Battered and bloody is to Spain. He kept trying, but it was too much to overcome. We will hear from the judges when we return to ESPN's Wide World of Sports at Disney World. Stay with us. Punch in the Night is brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color, and it leads off our highlights of Salak into Spain. Second round, Teddy. The jab sets up the right hand, and that would be there all night long. That is our Punch of the Night brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. As for the rest of the fight, well, there will be plenty of more punches from Salak, like in the third round when he opened up two cuts over both the right and left eye up to Spain. But the Spain would make a mild rally in the fifth. The right hand lands a little bit. He gets the lock where he needs him against the ropes where he can't use those wheels and where he slows him down for a moment. And then in round seven, that looping right hand that you pointed out, Teddy, by Salak, he would continue to do damage. He was steady throughout. We heard Buddy McGirt trying to tell his charge to Spain. First fight, they were together. Hey, you can no longer stay on the outside. He's tagging you there. So let's look at the copy box. Final numbers, total punches, 252 out of 634. The edge goes to Salak there, connecting on 40% of his total punches. Teddy's scorecard, and keep in mind that second round, 10-8, goes 98-91. Let's hear from the judges, and for that, we send it up to Bob Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Justin Center at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, Walt Disney World, after 10 rounds of championship boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judges Thomas Nardoni and Alex Levin both scored about 98-91. Judge Mike Ross scores about 99-90. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Ismail Salah. Welcome to the big leagues, Ishmael Salak. Teddy, your thoughts? Well, first of all, making no excuses for Despain, but something that we didn't mention during the fight, Despain had a lot to deal with. Not only the best opponent and the most experienced opponent because of his amateur background that Despain has ever dealt with, but he was going into this fight with a new trainer. Not an easy spot to be going into a fight with a new trainer. As good as Buddy McGurk is, when you're going in there with a new philosophy, new things in the gym, usually you don't want to go in there in this kind of fight. I don't know how much it hurt him, but I know one thing, Salak is pretty good. Brian Kenny is with the 15-0 Ishmael Salak. BK. Yes, indeed. An outstanding victory for you, Ishmael. You were able to get to him early in the second round. How were you able to do that? Um, I'm just on. I'm, my, uh, my coach, Adit Salak, so tell me to keep, have fun. Just uh, throw him, jab, jab, and uh, I catch him. Uh, just relax him and, and catch him. What was your thought process then? Get after him or just box? What did you want to do after you hurt him? Uh, just boxing. Because uh, uh, my corner said boxing, boxing. Don't hurt him. Uh, don't try. You know, because uh, when you try, you, you can uh, punch him. Uh, Kind of punch, you, know. you did get caught in the fifth round. What happened that enabled him to get back into the fight? Uh, I don't know. No, <laughs> well, you, uh, you got caught with a shot, a good shot. I wouldn't say you got hurt, but you got pushed back and you weren't as dominant. So yeah. how was he able to get back in? Um, I, uh, a little bit translated. I mean. translated. How was he able to get back in? Was it, was, how tough was it in the middle rounds, round five, where Ismail did get hurt? Он говорит, что ты в пятом руне пропустил удар, так тебе было тяжело. Oh, no, 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 I know, I know. You weren't hurt. No, I know, I know. Okay. I know, T Teddy Atlas ha had mentioned later in the fight, you wouldn't get baited into some sort of brawl because he wanted you to, you know, come after yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, how were you able to resist that temptation? No, it's, it's, I got good experience for this, for Cuban, I, I a lot of times fight as Cuban fighters, you know, it's, it's easy for me, you know, it's, I, I know what he didn't do, I just, I just do my job, you know. 
Uh, Ishmael, big win for you in your career. Yeah, you showed your, your, your class, uh, your, your great amateur background. Congratulations Thanks to you. Ishmael Salak, again, a winner here, 15-0, still undefeated. Joe.